I'm very happy to be here this morning to see you. Very happy. I am with my family, my wife, my my sons. You see how they, they grew up. <laughs> now they are taller than me. <laughs> and uh, parents, as parents, we are happy when we see our our kids growing. And we ask God all the time, not just growing um, physically, but we need that wisdom grow too, you know? And we pray all the time for our children. Keep praying for your children, keep praying for, for our children in church so that you can grow, they can grow with wisdom of God. Amen? Amen. So, I'm very happy and uh, to have these people online, those who are in the church, it's amazing. And I thank God for that. The psalmist wrote in chapter 117, verse 2, that for great is his love toward us and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. No matter what we may face or go through, his love endures forever. The Lord the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. I am very delighted to be in my father's house today. One friend of uh, my brother, he used to come to the church every Saturday morning. And few minutes later, he said in the church, few minutes later, he was sleeping, just sleeping. And the elder who was watching and sees that uh, event several times. And one day he went to the young man and asked him, young man, all the time you come to the church, few minutes later, I see you sleeping. And the young, why, why are you sleeping just five minutes later? And the young man said to the, to the elder, you know why I'm sleeping? When I arrive in the church, I feel very comfortable in my father's house. <laughs> very, very comfortable so that the next step is to sleep. <laughs> so I don't ask you to sleep. <laughs> sleep now but what i would like to ask you to feel comfortable in your father's house you know leave the world behind and keep the cross before you the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me, the cross before me, not turning back, not turning back. Amen. Leave the world behind you and think about the cross of Jesus this morning. So today, I was ah okay now this huh this huh right okay okay so. Today I was inspired to, to share with you a word of life and uh, to meditate about one of the promise of God, the powerful promise of God. Isaiah 41, 7, 10. Fear not for I am with you. 
Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I would like that we meditate on this, on this uh, subject. Fear not, stray strong. Let us pray. Lord, we recognize that you are the one we can trust. You are the one we can hold on to. You are the one who will save us and therefore we will not fear. Open our hearts as we're going to meditate on your word of life. Let your Holy Spirit flow upon us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Fear not. What is fear? Fear is the strongest and oldest emotion known to mankind. It serves as an, al an alarm signal, the function of which is to draw attention to the presence of danger. Fear, a health emotion at the start, reminder that there is a risk and to take a pause and to think, but becomes unhealthy when it is the object of a lasting fixation, when it comes obsession, when it comes a phobia that is dangerous for us. You can see all those steps, trepidation, nervousness, anxiety, dread, desperation, panic, terror, horror, and horror and terror. This is what fear is. But what is said in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 and 3, but now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have, what? Redeemed you. I have called you by your name. Your name. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Saba in your place. Fear not, because I have called you by your name. God knows your name. God knows you. God knows me. Do not be afraid, my brothers and sisters. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You are mine. When you see I have trouble with it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. You can, yeah. Yeah, I think. Uh... Yeah, do not be afraid, you are mine. If you see in the Bible, cross, the word, uh, verb cross comes uh, many times in the Bible and it, 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 it was used many times in the Bible to read the promised land, for example. The people of Israel had to cross the, the Red Sea, the desert, and then the Jordan. We ourselves will have to cross the Valley of Baca. The Valley of Baca, Valley of Tears, Valley of Laws, Valley of sorrows, valley of troubles, 
valley of storms, we'll have to cross all that, all those, you know? If you cross the water, I will be with you and the rivers, they will not over overwhelm you. If you walk in the fire, you will, not you will not burn and the flame will not consume you. Before God, you know, before God changes events, he often allows circumstances to change us. It's like graduation. You need to graduate. You have to pass the tests. Sometimes when we, we, ha we are having tests, we don't like that. But before God changes the event, he often allows circumstances to change us. Certainly, he promised to deliver us from our trials, but not necessarily as we would have uh, thought or according to our schedule. But, um, but God does not allow, only want to deliver us. He wants to help us to be like his son and make us discover all the potential that he has placed in us. Sometimes we think he's slow to help, to help us in our fear. But God does not manage time like we do. He created time, but he don't, like, he don't manage time like we do in minutes, hours, and days. No, he created, he created that time for us, but he's not in that time because he is eternal. Don't be afraid. Trust God. He knows what you need. Be patient. God works for you. He works in you. When you have gone through this experience, you will be able to look back with gratitude and you will never be the same again. Fear is not from God. Fear is not from God. If you doubt it, you can read in Revelation 21, verse 8. It's written there. But the cowards, the unbelievers, the abominable, the murderers, the harlots, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, their part shall be in the lake of what? Of fire and brimstone which is the second death you see at the top of the list what you see at the top of that list but for the cowards people the fearful people god doesn't like cowards when we are afraid and when uh, the devil is terrorizing us and we, are, we have fear, God doesn't like that. Fear is not from God, it's not of God. There's no fear in love and God is love. Fear is destructive and must be overcome. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. You, you know, when you, are, when you, you have fear, um, I, I, I'm not special, uh, specialist of this, of, of the matters, but when you, are, you have fear, some parts of your brain are reviving, okay, reviving up, and others are shooting down. There are some who, which are okay, alert, in alert, but others are shooting down. And those who are, which are shooting down is those parts of brain which control judgment, reasoning, you know? So when you, are, you have fear, you cannot re reason correctly. You cannot have a good judgment. You cannot take a good decision. 
So, fear is physical. When you have fear, you can see it on your body. And you know the devil, this is a secret of the devil. The devil sometimes doesn't know what we are thinking. But when he sees us acting, he can. He can know what is going on. He can know what is happening. And in that time, he can catch. That's why fear is not from God. It's natural to have fear, but when this fear stay and persist, that is a problem. The Satan, the devil can catch us in that time. Devil, the devil can use this weapon of fear to catch us. As you know, uh, it's written that Satan, Satan is like a roaring lion. I talk about lion before I think, and you know, the mindset of lion. That's why he is the king of a jungle. His mindset is I can. When he sees an elephant or a buffalo, his mindset is I can eat that. I can eat it. And the buffalo, his mindset is what? I can be eaten by that lion. You know? And that's why the buffalo wheat is powerful, strong. Uh, all the time when he sees the lion, he starts to, to do what? To flee, to run, to run away. But the buffalo is stronger. And his mindset, fear. Fear. When he sees the lion, I can be eaten. I can be eaten by that. When we see Satan come in front of us, oh, he can kill me oh he can do this and that and we start to have fear and run away but the bible doesn't say that resist and the devil will do what he will flee it's not us to flee it's the devil to flee satan uses this arm of fear to catch us the devil attacks us in different ways, misfortunes, illness, poverty, death, stress, depression, the feelings of guilt to which breathe anguish and become the fertile ground where the fear of the devil takes root and develop. It's possible to heal from your fears by restoring confidence in yourself, in others, but most in God. Romans uh, chapter 8, verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Amen? Amen. We don't have reason to fear. We were talking about David in Sabbath school. And we know for God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power over giants. Giants will come in our lives, you know? And the king, I don't know if there's someone who did have a giant before him, but if, if you didn't have this giant, they will come. They will come any day. But for God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power over this giant. This giant Goliath was saying, terrorizing Israel people and the king and the army. And those, what you see, give me a man that we may fight together. That's what Goliath was saying in the valley. And when we read in the Bible, 
the king and the army were, were very, very afraid. That's what we read in the Bible. Goliath looked unbeatable, but David, who was a young shepherd boy, was not intimidated. However, no. And when the king was intimidated, David said this, did you forget God is, in all, is on our side? Before going out to confront the giant himself. It's amazing this story. When I was a kid, I, I, I was all the time reading this story, all the time. And we had big pictures in my house <laughs> over the war and I was all the time going and look at that picture of David, the little David and the giant Goliath. Goliath. For God gave us a spirit not fear but of power. My young friends, I am sure David David must have been just a little bit afraid as Goliath was coming across the valley, making all kinds of threats. However, in spite of any fear, he displays amazing courage. Look what David was saying. David calls out of the giant, you are coming against me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. Amen? Amen. He was not having just a, 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 a human vision or sight, a natural sight, but a faith vision. God was working with this young man. I guess maybe you won't ever have face a giant. Young people who are here, like Goliath, armed with a stone, uh, 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 armed with javelin and all, all stuff, but you will have, if you face other storms, other giants in your life, you have to have the courage that David had. I was a little guy, a, 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 little, a little boy. This is the kind of courage that will enable you to face any kind of giant with boldness and confidence. And this was a physical, physical giant. Sometimes in life we have natural physical giant and we have also spiritual giants or private giants, the giants that people don't see. These giants that people don't see, for example. Huh? And these are very dangerous. We saw the first public giant, Goliath, but at Sabbath school, we saw another private giant that David had. And that giant, people didn't know that. Huh? Goliath, the first giant was ugly. It was huge. It was hairy. It was uncircumcised Philistine. And it caused all of King Saul's armies to tremble in fear. It went by the name of Goliath. The second one, he faced he faced more, many, many others, but we know about the most known is th these two. The second giant he faced certainly didn't look like the first one. And I would imagine that it wasn't a hairy as the first one, but let me tell you, this giant was just as real as the first one. The second giant that David faced was sneaky hidden and only came around in vulnerable moment. It went by the name of, of Bathsheba. 
as you read in 2 Samuel chapter 11, kings no more go out to war in the springs, but for some reason, David decided to stay back. We are uncertain of why. <laughs> David chose not to go out to war, but one thing we know for sure is that if this decision opened up a can of worm in David's life and revealed the giant he struggled to defeat. This giant was real for David and he was struggling to defeat it. As, they, as they, uh, the story goes, David noticed a beautiful woman, Bathsheba, bathing and ends up, for, up sleeping with her. Bathsheba's husband is at war. And you know what David did to, uh, to cover all this story. You know what he did? Call uh, the, the husband to come and the husband didn't go. He was a, a, a honest man. He didn't go at home. So you, you, David plot to kill this man. It was sad. He plot to kill this man. But this is the giant that came and David was struggling with this giant. Sometimes we have this giant struggling with them, ourselves. We have to talk to other people, men and women of God exist. You can tell them and they can help you. Sometimes you tell your story to people and they start, they start to stab you by what you said, but people of God exist. You can tell to some people and they will help you to struggle in this struggle. Don't, don't stay alone because this is the, the strategy of the devil to take you in fear. I have been many times in the, in the park, national park, and I saw how the lion take his animal. What do they do? They start to isolate one animal from others. And when they arrive to isolate the animal, in that time they catch. I saw them in action and the devil the same. You are struggling with something, with a giant, and you don't talk to people. You continue to struggle and this devil takes you a, 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 somewhere in a corner and you don't see issue to get out of that. So David was struggling with this giant that people didn't know. The giant can come in drugs, you know, young people. Can you change for me, please? They can come in different ways, this giant. Devil attacks in different ways. Drugs, depression, alcohol, cigarettes. All these are giants, you know, are giants in front of us that we have to deal with. The devil sows terror through the giant he set up in front of us. The giant arrive and knock at your door. This will come and knock. You not tell the giant, no, 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 not now. Not now, go pass, go to the next or to the neighbor. No, he will come any time, never know. That's why God say, watch. Otherwise he will come and know. Huh? Impossible to send him to somebody else. To the next door, this giant to sow terror, slavery, it can be drugs, sex, homosexuality, alcohol, cigarette, depression, anxiety, sickness, hunger, handicap, and so on. Wars around us, death, all these are giants. When the devil catches and terrorizes us, so we have to be 
very careful. Yeah, the, the lady you see there uh, in 2009, she, she's, she was a, a writer. She was a writer and she wrote many, many, bo many, many books, Child in the Mirror, um, um, Paradis Cri en Main. She, she, she's from Montreal. And one day in 2009, I saw on TV that she passed away. She was very young, very beautiful. But she was a super anxious woman and she was obsessed with the representation of herself and intimate relationship to her own body. So this lady was afraid. He had a fear of getting old, of displeasing, of not being cute anymore. And one day, 2009, she decided to commit suicide. She was just 36, age of, and he had just fear of getting old, displeasing, not being cute anymore. Imagine, the devil walks in different ways and giant comes in different forms. You never know. So we have to keep and watching and watch and pray. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Never fear my, my brothers and sisters. I, as I, I told you, Giants come in different ways, and storms come in different ways, troubles. And the, the man you see there, I don't know if you recognize him. Do you recognize this guy? This, this guy became, he was um, blind from young age. When he was born, he was premature and so he, when he was born, he was blind. This is TV wonder. You cannot recognize because this was during his young age. Stevie wonder lost his sight as a newborn when he came into the world six weeks early with retinopathy of prematurity. So her mother was crying all the time, all the time crying. This was, this was the, the giant for her mother. Not just for Stevie Wonder, but for her mother too. So she was all the time crying. And at five years of age, he reported, told him, his mother, don't worry about me being blind because I am happy. Because I am happy. This little boy, he started to have active, to be active in local church, choir. There where he started to, to learn how to play instruments. As you see, because I knew him. When I saw a blind man playing like that, singing like that, I said, wow, that I cannot do it. I have my two eyes, I cannot play like that, like Stevie Wonder. But you see, he was happy. He was not afraid of his blindness. When asked Oprah, by Oprah about the remarks he acknowledged, 
It's saying, it bothered me that my mother was crying all the time. She thought God might be punishing her for something. She lived during a time when things were particularly difficult for a woman in her circumstances. Wanda has said never felt hindered by his disability, telling the Guardian in 2012, I am what I am, I love me, and I don't mean that egotistical. I love that God has allowed me to take whatever it was that I had and to make something out of it. Amen? Take whatever it was. Take his blindness and make something from that blindness instead of fear and isolating and dismayed, no. From nothing to something, you know? Sometimes it's crazy to see like our guy, our, our children having all of what they can have, but nothing come from that because God is not there. Him we took from nothing to something. But some of our, our children are taking something from something to, to nothing. Prisons, drugs, sex, prostitution, homosexuality, things like those. I am what I am, I love me, and I don't mean that egotistically. I love that God has allowed me to take whatever it was that I had and to make something out of it. Even as a child, Wanda never let his vision disorder hold him back because he knew the devil can take you in this fear. Say no to the devil, stand strong in the storm. I am no longer a slave. I love this, I love this song. I'm no longer a slave of fear. I am a child of God. I am surrounded by the arms of the Father. Love has called my name. His goodness is running after me. I am a child of God. I am free, hallelujah. I am no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God, amen. We have to, to stand strong, the devil. I think you know this man. Do you know this man? I don't know if you know him, the, the, this soldier, this officer, Idi Amin. Idi Amin was terrorizing Africa at that time particularly Uganda, he was a, a, a president of Uganda and he was killing people. When I was a kid in Rwanda, they were talking about Idi Amin. Idi Amin was in Uganda, but in Rwanda, we had fear of Idi Amin. He was terrorizing people, killing people, and especially Christians. He killed a lot of Christians. And the man you see, uh, I, I, my right on the image, his name is Janani Luwum. And this man, armed with a Bible and a cross, a Ugandan Anglican archbishop took the, a bold step 38 years ago when he demanded that the dicta, that dictator Idi Amin put, he asked him, put, you have to put an end to extrajudicial killings, political repression, corruption, and ethnic persecution. He knew the threat because this man, you cannot 
say like this and, and, and be alive. But he, like a man of God, he stand up before Idi Amin and told him that. Unfortunately, some days later, this guy was killed by Idi Amin. But he still stood up. Our Bishop Jinani Luwum paid with his life. He was assassinated on February 16, 77. His, his body placed in mangled car wreck in state in staged accident. But Idi Amin asked himself to kill this man. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of evil. He stand up and say, no, you have to stop this. Sometimes leaders, they have not fear. They have to stand up and say no. When people are uh, in trouble somewhere in the world, intervene and say, no, you have to stop that. They're not follow the political issues and, uh, and not say something. So death is one of, of the giant that the devil uses to terrorize us. But when you see in Colossians chapter three, verse three, it's for you died to the life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the, to the whole world, you will share in or his glory. So we don't have to to fear, to fear death. Death is, not, is one of the giants that the devil uses to terrorize us. And this man didn't be afraid of Idi Amin. He chose to die for truth. We salute him that, and we shall always be grateful to his memory forever. This is the president of Uganda now said this because of his courage. We salute him for that and we shall always be grateful for him, his memory forever. And seven said, no fear about, about death. My brothers and sisters, we don't have to fear of, of death. So no fear about death. Death is dead. Do you know that? Death is dead. We don't have to, be, to, to fear. The day the promised one had died, it seemed that heaven's love had lost as Jesus hung up upon the cross. His broken body laid to rest as earth was filled with hopelessness till the son of man began to wake and the tomb became an empty grave. It was the death of death when Jesus rose to life. When the dark surround sur surrendered to the risen light, oh, pray the Savior Jesus Christ, the death of death is your victory. For Colossians 3, verse 3, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. We don't have to fear about death. Sometimes death arrives, yes, it's sad to, 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 uh, to, to, to not have someone we loved with us, okay? But we have to, to know that God, one day, he will come as Jesus Christ rose up, our ones, our loved ones will rose up with Christ and will live forever. If we have a sickness or if we have something that is troubling us, we have to know that. It's the attack of the devil. We don't have to be afraid 
my brothers and sisters, we have to attack the devil too. Attack the devil every day. We have to attack the devil every day and bind him with prayers. Use the weapon that God has given to you. You bind him from your future, from your business, from your family, from every corner of you. Jesus has defeated him. He has broken the chain. Amen. He is the lion of Judah. He is the one who has power. If your life is empty and you feel fearful, pray. Your life is meaningless, pray. If your child is in darkness, pray, God said, and ask. Go to the war against the devil in the name of Almighty God. He is on your side, Jehovah, Shalom. The victory is our strength, Jesus Christ. If you ask in my name, you will get John 14, verse 14. If the devil fights, fight back too. You know, don't leave him fighting. Fight back. All right? Put your whole arm of God. That's what is said in Ephesians 6, 11. Can, can see what is written there. Ephesians 6, 11. It's written, put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the words of the devil. Put the arm of God, pray, read the Bible of God, read the word of God. In Psalms 91 verse four to five, it's written also, we can read this verse, 91, Psalms 91, verse 4 to 5, it's, it's written, He shall cover thee with his faces, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckle. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that faith by day. He will cover you. Fear not. Don't worry. Trust God. Stop worrying. Start living with God. Say no. Say no to the devil. Say no. Say no. Resist the devil. Stand to the door. Stand to the door and say no. He can't. You cannot enter my house and come terrorize me. If the devil wait outside of the door and wants to stop you, don't stop. Walk straight. Keep going. He will be obliged to move. Walk with faith in Jesus, with insurance in heart. He will flee from you. What the devil tries to do is to stand in front of our promise and shadow it. And when we fall in darkness, he start to terrorize us. Mercy said no. This Sissy Wainer, this song of Sissy Wainans, I like it. Mercy said no, I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you sleep away. You don't have to be afraid. Mercy said no. Sin will never take control. Life and death stood face to face. Darkness tried to steal my heart away. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mercy said no. For God so loved the world that he sent his son to save us. From the cross, he built a bridge to set us free. Tell the devil no. Resist, he will free. Resist, he will free. Tell him, you cannot take my happiness. No, 
You cannot take my praise to Jesus. No. You cannot take away my hallelujah. No. Not my family. You cannot take away my family. No, you cannot take away my wife or my husband. No, you cannot take away my children. No, tell the devil no. God promised to save you and to deliver you. Even if you fall, stand up and fight back. Don't be intimidated by giants. No. Fear not, don't worry, trust God. Worry is insurance that the disaster is coming. Worry is believing in your personal defeat. It kills hope, optimism. Say no to fear, to fear's master. For great is love and the faithfulness of the Lord and Jews forever, my friends. The great and unfailing love of God towards you will never stop. To know what we are loved by God is powerful thought. No matter what we may face or go through, his love endures and his love is great. Is great for you, is great now, is great. He has been great even if you didn't know the Lord has been there all the time, even if sometimes we turn back and we don't want to meet him, but all the time he is there. He's watching. He's watching. If you turn to him, he's telling you your mind. I know your name. I know your fears. I know your troubles. I know what is going on in your heart. I know. I can help you, you are mine. And that's why the devil don't like us because we are the property of God. We are the property of God and the devil doesn't like that. So now, when you start to have thought of fear, troubles, you don't see any, any, any opportunity or issues where you can pass and move out, think, fear not, because I am with you. I am with you today and forever. That is my wish and is my prayer for you and for me in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Brother Enos, for the message of the day. And as the song properly said, be not dismay, whatever die, God will take care of you. And it does not give us a spirit of fear, <clears throat> but a spirit of boldness. And as we march into Zion, do not look back in fear, but let us joyfully walk, knowing that we are we have our eyes on the prize. And these are the words that we'll sing to end our service today, number 422, we're marching to Zion. I shall invite you to stand as we sing together. 422. Come with and love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus around the throne, and thus around the throne, we march into Zion. Up what you saw, the beautiful 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity you have given us to meditate on your world of life. We receive your love for us as a living reality. In spite of this, the storms that are raging around us, the troubles and fear that the devil saw in and around us, your love is eternal. Your promise to stay and support us is eternal. Let us lean on this promise, God, and help us in our lives to recognize that you are our Lord, you are our creator, you are our supporter, you are our guide, you are everything to us, oh Lord. Keep us in your arms of love. We want to be yours. We want to be your children. We have been so far, but now we come again, and when we, we want to be, to belong to you. Take, take us as we are, and cleanse all our sins, and give us a new heart, and give us courage to face the devil, to face fear so that we can keep marching to Zion where we belong. Help us, and this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.